Hello, welcome to A Doctor's Crafty Life. My name is Ofundem, also known as Neurocon Stitches on Instagram. Today, I would like to share with you how I made these fabulous clogs. I started making my own shoes about six months ago, and to date, I have made close to 30 pairs of shoes. And I would like to start to share with others how someone who is not a shoemaker, who did not go to school to learn how to make shoes, can make their own shoes at home. How regular people can make their own shoes at home. I am not a shoemaker by craft. I'm a healthcare professional. I'm a physician. And all my spare time, I knit, I sew, I crochet. I do whatever craft I can get my hands on to enjoy, to make sure I'm getting the most out of life. So that's with that, I would like to share my makes and to share how I made these fabulous clocks, which is actually very comfortable and fits me very well. Now, the reason why I make my own shoes is because I have big feet. I wear a size 43, 44, and so when it gets to things like clogs and great shoes, I can never find what I want. I just settle for what's made. So I would like to go ahead and share how I make my own clogs so people would size issues like me can make their own shoes at home so without much to say let me head to the my crafting table and show you how i made my clogs hello my name is Ofundem, showing you how i made this green fabulous clogs first i'm modifying a pattern from an existing clogs which the tutorial is online and running so to make this pattern you can refer to the tutorials part one for pattern making. Next, I'm gonna place it on this paper and draw my new pattern. I like my new pattern to run longer out. So I'm gonna trace it far out here. To make classic Swedish clocks. Here's my new traced out pattern. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this pattern. Here is my cut out main pattern for my clogs. Next, I'm going to go ahead and prepare a strip with a scallop edge to go across this pattern. Here's what my strip that goes across the clocks look like. It's a one-sided scallop edge. I'm beginning to really like scallop edges and I use them in a lot of my shoe mix. Now I have my two pieces that I would like to use for my clogs. And I have my vegetable tent leather that I'll be using to make my clogs today. So I'm going to turn around, flip it around and Trace the pattern and then cut out the pieces. Tracing out my cord pieces. So now I have the two pieces of my le upper leather and the two pieces of my cross straps right here. 
and I will go ahead and put some decorative stitching around uh, the edges, around the edges and the inside and the scallop edges. And, and I'll show you how the completed upper looks. I would like to show you a little bit on how I saw the scallop edges on the machine. So I just place this down and I rotate it and I start all over again. Now it's um, I'm usually never perfect in this, but I try. <laughs> This machine is really forgiving to move um, stuff around in different directions. It will still so very smoothly as you move the leather around. So that's the good part about this machine. So I rotate it. And I just sew slowly as I can to be as accurate as I can. And in the end, I just back stitch for two to three stitches and it's done. And I cut. Now I have completed the upper portion of my clogs. I went around and sewed the edges here if you can see that to give it a finished look there and also i sew the scallop edge that's good will be sitting on top of the clock just to give it you know a little bit of a finished look i have my bowl of warm water and i will place the clock pieces into the water so they can get nice and wet and this softens the clocks so they're able to last over the mold here is my pieces in the water it's not you can have it in steam industrially they do it differently from this you just have to get it completely wet and softened to design my insole for the clogs today i'll be using this clog base as the as the to trace the insole I'll be using high density EVA foam and I'll be using this pretty gold leather. For my insole pattern, I just shape the trace the shape of the of the clog the, the clog sole like this. I did go around and cut the piece with a pair of scissors and here we have it. So it goes, um, it fits like this. Next, I'll go ahead and trace a piece of the EVA foam and a piece of my leather and I'll show you the finished product. So now I have the two pieces of my EVA foam for in insoles. This is purely an optional step that's mainly for comfort and also sometimes for design. And I have the insole leather, which as you can see here, I cut and left about a one to one and a half centimeter um, border so I can fold it over the EVA foam. Next, I use water-based glue. What I use is Rhenia Aquilum to apply to both sides of the leather and the EVA foam so I can stick them together. Now the glue is dry and I'll go ahead and Fold it across over the foam like that.
Okay, like this. I'll go ahead and adjust the bottom and trim the edges and complete the second piece. So now I have a pair of my soles and a pair of my insoles trimmed. I went ahead and did what's called skiving, trimming with a knife the edges here to make it a little bit smoother transition so you don't feel the leather when you um, wear uh, the clogs. Now, it, if, it, if it's soft or thin leather, you don't even need to do that. You will still not feel it. Now, the insole process is complete. I have two of my soles and two insoles here ready to be glued together with the cement. To glue the insole to the sole, I use cement. I use Rainier called the Cologne. It's an all-purpose cement that I use. You apply glue to the to both sides of the surfaces and allow it a few minutes to dry, and it'll stick together. So I'll go ahead and apply the glue. I'll go ahead and finish this process and I'll show you how I put them together. Both surfaces are now dry and I'll go ahead and attach the clock to the base. One side is complete, I'll go ahead and finish the other side. Before I last the clogs, I place my clog last in the clogs and place it exactly where I would like for it to be in the front. I would like a little bit of, of outward fold so it comes up and out. So I place it exactly where I would like it to be. And then I come back here and I use a silver marker. I come in the back, I use a silver marker to mark where I would like to place my nail right there. And then I also mark the sides where I'll place the smaller nails and mark the sides on this one. And I'll do the same thing for the other leg. I'll place the nails and I'll show you the process of what I did. So here are the nails I placed. I placed a larger three and a half inch nail in the back to secure the the last and two nails on the side these will hold it in place i also went ahead and attached two rough pieces of masking tape on the top secure to their insole so that the clog does not move around too much as i apply the nails now I'll go ahead and take the first clog out of the water and dry it somewhat before I start to nail it on. So here's the first piece of clog. It's still pretty wet and drip and dripping water. I'm gonna wipe wipe it out and dab out some of the extra water. As you can see, it's very soft now and very malleable, um, allowing it to be able to pull around somewhat easier while I um, last the clogs. So I'm going to go ahead and place the first piece right over the clogs and first I will attach the side pieces, then I'll attach the front piece and then I'll just walk my way around. So the nails I'll be using today are 5 8 inch top 
upholstery nails the small and it's somewhat of a black to it's like a gunpowder color here so this is what i'll be using for my clocks today i typically don't measure the distance i just go ahead and apply them how i see fit I try to put it on a softer surface so I do not damage the clogs while I place this on. So the first piece I place typically in the edge here, right on the edge of the thread and I apply my, my nail. There's the first one. Then I'm gonna flip the other side and pull it across and apply the nail on this one. This one secured. Next, I'm going to pull the front piece over, put it over the last there. So, I'm going to apply the front glue, the front uh, nail piece here. So I have the side pieces and the front piece attached. I'm going to go ahead and pull as I go and apply and apply the nails to all the sides. To complete the, the, the lasting process. So I went ahead and placed the nails the way I wanted them on the front and around and that nail in the back we have still have the nails in the back now I left these areas open because I want to be able to put the band piece that I created so I'm going to take that out of the water okay here's the piece I'm going to dry it and then place it how I want it so when I was designing the pattern, initially I thought I was just going to place it over that. But it doesn't look that great to me. So I'm going to move it higher up. And I think this is how I want to see it. Like this. With a scallop edge. Like that. Let me see if I can get a better visualization here. Alright, like that. So I like to make the clocks to look like that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue nailing. I'll nail the, the piece. Again, I have to be careful not to scratch the clogs while I make them. So I'm going to head and place it on something soft like a towel. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to. Okay, so I have this piece right here and I'm going to go ahead and place the nail. in the middle and one on this other edge here and it looks like that so I'll go ahead and continue placing the nails here and place on the other side 
and this will complete the molding process and I'll do the same for the other leg. So here is a pair of the clogs that are, the nails are in and the next step is to go ahead and trim the excess leather at the edge of the clogs. So typically I just use a knife and I just run it around the line um, there where just like that I run it around the line and I cut it several times until I trim the piece so I'm gonna go ahead and trim the extra pieces here so here is the finished product I did go ahead and remove the extra leather that was sitting here from the main piece on both sides to give a better finished look in the edge. The last thing I'll do before I completely finish is to cover this edge with some leather. I don't like how the raw edge um, sits so I'll just get a piece of a strip of leather and cover this edge with it and I'll show you how I do um, once I'm done with it. So the clogs are now complete. I covered the rest of the groove in the back with the same leather I used for the clogs and some additional nails as I didn't like the exposed back. So now I'm going to go ahead and leave it till tomorrow to dry and then I will take it out of the last and see how the clogs fit. nice and warm here in our area therefore over the past 12 hours the clogs are completely dry and I'm ready to take them out of the clog last so this is the one I've taken you can see all the holes that I made there from holding it in place and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the other clogs to show you how I do that I just wiggle using this it just sorry if this is shaking it but I just pretty much have to wiggle this out and pull the clogs out. I'm going to take out the side nails. So I'm going to go ahead and completely take out the side nails and ready to put in the insole. So I did remove the last from the clock and here they are finished so the last thing i'm gonna do is apply my insole sock to cover the holes i made and complete the clog making process now the clogs are complete my stamp is applied to them as you can see so it's Nerocon handcrafted and they're ready to be tried on. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope that it was very helpful. I do plan to bring more content similar to this and more podcasting. Please subscribe to my channel to get more direct notifications for new posts and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up thank you for watching